In this video, we're gonna be covering Super Nintendo emulation on M1 and M2 based Macs with RetroArch. All right, everybody, we are covering Super Nintendo emulation once again, only this time we are talking about the SNES 9X core instead of BSNES. SNES 9X has a number of features that might be appealing to a number of you, such as retro achievement support and easier use of MSU1 audio packs. While not as accurate as BSNES, the trade-offs are very nice and you're still getting a top-notch Super Nintendo emulation experience. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we get started, this video is a continuation of my M1 and M2 base Mac RetroArch setup guide. So if you haven't gotten RetroArch set up and configured, link in the description below will take you to this playlist where you can get that set up and installed. Thus, you can continue along with this guide. But once you have RetroArch set up and good to go, just go ahead and get it opened up. And we are going to download the SNES 9X core. So head into the online updater, core downloader, Press the right key on your keyboard or on a controller. Scroll down to the Nintendo section here. Find SNES 9X current and then just press enter or A to download it. Now once that core is downloaded, we're ready to begin loading up Super Nintendo content that you have stored anywhere on your Mac hard drive. So Super Nintendo games can be in a couple different formats like SFC or you can have them zipped up. Shouldn't matter either way. But one method of loading them up is to head to load content Navigate to the directory where they're stored. Choose a game, choose your core, so in this case SNES 9X, and then it should load right up. And as you can see, this core does support retro achievements. Now, personally, I'm not too fond of that method. It's a bit long-winded, so what I like to do instead is head over to Import Content. And the best way to scan Super Nintendo games is to click on the Scan Directory option here and then navigate to the directory where your games are stored. So here we go, games, Super Nintendo games. And once there, click on scan this directory. And after the directory scan has finished, you will have a new Super Nintendo emulation playlist here. And if your games were detected by the database, they will begin to automatically download thumbnails as you can see here on the right. Now there is one game that it did not find for me and that is my Chips Challenge SNES release from the Retro Room games. So I could just head back into Import Content, do a manual scan, choose my Super Nintendo games folder once again, system name, head down to Nintendo, find Super Nintendo, and then for default core, you could choose your SNES 9X core. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have them in subfolders. And if you have your games zipped up, make sure you have scan inside archives turned on. And then you can just go ahead and click on start scan and it will add any missing games from your playlist into it. So there we go, chips challenge. And I've previously added a box art to this game already. So that way it's already just defaulting with it showing up. But for anyone interested in manually adding in box arts for your games, this process is actually quite simple. All you need to do is add a PNG format picture of the game in question, named after how it appears in your playlists, and then you just click on go, hold down this um, option key here, click on library, application support, RetroArch, thumbnails, go to the system in question, so Super Nintendo in this case, named box arts, and then you just add in the .png formatted picture, with the appropriate name corresponding to your playlist entries. And then it will begin loading up with your playlists. But once your playlist is made, all you need to do to load up games is go to a game, tell it to run, and then choose the core that you want it to run with. But there we go, Super Nintendo games up and running on our M1 and M2 base Max using the SNES 9X core. Now you may have noticed that things were looking a bit jittery when I was playing through that level here, and that's because of my preemptive frames being on and I haven't really configured them yet. 
So heading into settings, the latency tab here, my number of preemptive frames were set to three. So reducing it down to something like one will help reduce that jitter because it is a demanding option. And there we go, that's a lot better. Just wanted to confirm that there real quick. So much better, lower input latency, no jitter, very nice. Anyways, this being emulation, there is so much more we could do with the SNES 9X Core, so let's go ahead and talk about core options now. So pressing F1 on your keyboard will bring you to the Retro Art Quick menu, or a guide button on a controller. So the first thing we're going to do is look at additional control options. So heading down to the Controls tab here, Port 1 Controls, you can see the device type is set to SNES Joypad by default, which is great. But if you are playing games that can use the SNES mouse, you can enable that here or a multi-tap for multiplayer-based gameplay. And then you could do the same thing for ports 2, which includes the mouse, multi-tap, as well as super scopes, justifiers, and max rifles. And then if you have the multi-tap enabled, you can set controllers for those as well in their corresponding ports. But anyway, Moving on, let's talk about core options. So first up, we have console region. This is set to auto by default, and that should work for most use cases, but you can manually set a region if desired. Next, preferred aspect ratio. This is set to four by three, but you could change this over to an uncorrected aspect ratio, auto aspect ratio, PAL or NTSC. So I like four by three, it's what I'm used to, so I just stick with it. Next, you could crop the overscan to get rid of garbage data around the borders of your screen. So you could choose between auto, 12, 16, or just turn it off. Next, we have high res blending. So this will kind of give you a blurring effect, but it is required if you want to have a more accurate image output for certain high res mode games. Next, we have our Blarg NTSC filter. So these are basically built-in shaders to give you different video effects. So if you want to simulate a black and white TV, hey, there you go. Or RF video signals. Composite. S-Video. And then RGB. So the results are pretty dang authentic and look really cool. But again, you could also use RetroArch's built-in shaders to achieve similar effects. Next up, audio interpolation. So you could change between Gaussian, Cubic, Sync, None, or Linear. So this is gonna be a personal preference matter. Choose whichever one you think sounds best. Next up, allow opposing directions. You're not really gonna need that. All right, next up, emulation hacks. So our first option in here is the ability to overclock the Super FX chip. So if you want Star Fox to run faster, you can go ahead and crank this up, get faster FPS in Star Fox. Do know it can break some stuff, so do be aware of that. Next, we have the reduce slowdown options. So this is essentially overclocking your emulated Super Nintendo CPU to reduce slowdowns. So there's three different options available. If you're gonna use it, just go ahead and use the compatible option, should get rid of most slowdowns. Next, reduce flickering. So this is a sprite limit. So for games that have too many sprites per scan line, you can enable this option to remove the flickering. Next up, randomize memory. So this isn't really an option most end users are gonna need. But if you happen to be playing super off-road, you can randomize the, me the memory, so that way you get uh, a little bit more unpredictable gameplay according to the uh, info text there. Next up, block invalid VRAM access. Leave this option on unless you're using older ROM hacks, then you can disable it to make those work. Next up, echo buffer hack. This is again one that's only going to be used for older ROM hacks, so not going to be needed for most use cases. Next up, light gun options. So. First option, our mode. So light gun is going to be your mouse and touch screen is going to be a touch screen. Then you can reverse the trigger buttons on a super scope, change your super scope's crosshair type, color, and then same thing with the justifier. You can change the color, crosshair type for both players. And then same thing with the max rifle. And finally, we have the advanced audio and video settings. So this one's pretty cool. You can actually go through and remove background layers on different games. Like this is cool if you want to take like certain screenshots. Like let's get rid of uh, the sprites there. So it's literally just the backgrounds, like cool stuff. 
And then you can also disable different sound channels on the Super Nintendo's sound chip. So not really necessary for gameplay, but cool if you want to take high-res images of game backgrounds or something. And that's going to do it as far as our core options are concerned. So as always, if there are options you want to save for some games and not others, you can head into Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file. That way, these options only apply to the game in question and not every game with the SNES 9X Core. But that's going to do it as far as Super Nintendo emulation is concerned within the SNES 9X Core. Get your games, get the core downloaded, begin playing, and enjoy. But thank you so much as always for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps you get your Super Nintendo games up and running to your desires. But here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. Can never thank you all enough. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.